Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Redbeard and this is the Weekly Roundup. I plan to make three of these videos and possibly more in the coming weeks with the current drip feed of news. Uh, if the announcements and news keep flowing, I'll make more videos. Uh, more weekly roundups, that is. Today, I will be discussing the announced starting positions, how they pertain to my other speculation video, and what this means for the upcoming announcements. At the end, I will briefly discuss the new dedicated faction's unique mechanics, which are being announced Tuesday on Tuesday Newsday. Some of you may see this video after that time, so you may or may not want to skip uh, when you get to that part of the video. Though I will say there might still be some good nuggets in there anyway. Nonetheless, I will try making timestamps so you can jump around as you please. Since my last video, I had been away on business for over a week, so I'm just getting back. Otherwise, I would have dropped another video by now. Crunch time is back on, as I have a string of videos to make after this one. So, here we go again. Buckle up for safety, biznatches. I will now go through race by race in order of announcement, and after that I will discuss uh, how it changes uh, the lords that have not been announced <clears throat> um, pertaining to my original predictions and the image that was just shown. Um, so... I am going to start with Bretonia since they were just announced today, though. And guess what? I called the absolute fucking shit out of that shit. Alberic is in the Piranha Swamps, just as I had predicted. Booyah, baby! My powers of deduction are unparalleled. <laughs> I mean, I got the Greater Demons greatly incorrect, but Alberic in the Piranha Swamps? I'm quite literally very proud of myself. If you haven't seen my last video, I went full Charlie Day meme on Alberic, using real world history and basically scraps of lore and game experience to deduce the Piranha Swamps. Glorious. So you should check that out if you haven't already. Regular old Sherlock's home offs in this bitch. Holmes. Sherlock Holmes off in this. Yeah, you know. For the Empire. Carl Franz, Marcus Wolf, Art, and Balthazar Gelt will maintain their current territories, which for the former two is excellent. Gelt is the first of a few choices in which I think CA is digging a hole for itself as far as bringing in future content. The memes are sad this week. Gelt won't start in Estalia, but this may mean more room for a Dogs of War slash Southern Realm start position. As I stated in my previous video, I think the top candidates for Empire Lords in DLC or FLC content, besides Toddbringer, are Marius, Lightdorf, and Elspeth von Draken, who would start in Averland and Wissenden, respectively. But as you see in this image, Gilt's current position really hurts both of their chances. Be even clearer, not only do I hope that every single race gets at least one more legendary lord and content treatment in Game 3's life cycle, but I also hope that the original four races of Game 1 get the same treatment as the original four races of Game 2. By this, I mean at least six legendary lords, for it is in my opinion that the original four <coughs> are more deserving due to popularity and having more named characters and novelizations. To be even clearer, the original four races of Game 1, being the Empire Dwarves, Vampire Counts, and Greenskins, should have at least six, if not seven or eight legendary lords sometime before the end of Game 3's lifetime. So, for not moving Gelt, I think this illustrates a lack of foresight on CA's part, but perhaps I'm missing something that will become clearer in the future. I can only hope. Lastly, and most excitingly, we have Volkmar in the infamous Sudenberg. 
I may have liked Volkmar fighting Chaos a bit closer to the Empire, but I'm still very happy with this start position. The only other issue is, as it seems of the moment, of this writing, is that CA may be creating a Lustriable situation over in the Southlands, which could be problematic for several reasons. I may detail more later. <clears throat> for now, more on why I like this position, for Volkmar at least. There is some lore on Volkmar in the end times fighting the undead, uh, if not less than chaos, around Nehekara. His mechanic on finding dark artifacts works well here, which I will talk about more later in the dedicated faction mechanics section of the video. For now, the last thing I'll say is that moving to the Southlands helps free up the Empire for future content. So, the Southlands Thunderdome grows. Now everybody from the 313, put your motherfucking hands in the air for the DOC. That's right, we are talking about Demons of Chaos. Bellacor is the only missing DOC lord from the starting position announcement. I think this is because they will put him along sca alongside Skaven on Tuesday, Newsday, which is when they are talking about Bellacors and the other new dedicated factions. Albion is still open, which is good news. I heard other people in the community talking about Mordheim, which is another good position from a lore standpoint. But I hope they only make this move if they are planning to bring Mona Mim or another Famir Lord like Raka, both originating from Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, uh, the former being new and the latter from a 1995 module. Uh, Albion is a loreful Famir location, even though Mona Mem, I think lorefully is in a bog somewhere in the Empire. Again, she's new, I'm, I don't I don't have the um, supplement to read through uh, which she is contained within. I could also see a Famir position, if we get one, in Lustria of Koresh. In Lustria or Koresh. Uh, Mordheim would have some problems for Bellacor due to what I talked about with uh, Volkmar possibly in the Eastern Empire in my last video. But it would be farther from Yuri's start position than Albion would be. For Yuri, the Demon Prince, he starts in the Forests of Decay settlement in the Eternal Lagoon province with the tagline in the blog that, quote, allows him to compete for the ultimate leadership of chaos, which may just refer to the central location in the northern chaos wastes, but I think may be a hint that my prediction from the last video may come true in that Archaeon may start close by, uh, close by in the northern wastes province. Either way, this frees up Norska for the Champions DLC moves him further from where Bellacor ends up, and keeps him somewhat close to his lorefer, loreful birthplace of Kislev. Especially with the Red Tsar close by now. They can have a nice rivalry. No surprise from Nakari. We knew from data mining that Nakari was moving to Kreis, and this being probably the only greater demon move that I'm truly happy with. The other three Greater Demon positions largely were surprising to the community. I would have thought Greater and eventually Lesser Demon starting positions would have largely been consolidated to the Chaos Wastes, where they would be strongest, and saving other Chaos and Monogod starting positions for the Mortal Champions, Chaos Spawns, or Demon Princes. But apparently myself and the community were woefully incorrect in that path of thought. For Kairos, I know of no lore pitting him at the southern tip of Lustria. It is also right next to the southern Chaos Wastes, and from a gameplay perspective, the Fortress of Dawn is interesting, but who's going to pressure the Great Bastion now? I'm sure that one of the DLC champions is going to fill that role, being either Valkia or Egrim for a Flying Lord. 
Because who better to pressure the great bastion than a flying lord who can just sail right over and help open the way for the rest of the army? Thematically, I think a greater demon of Qian Sin would have made more sense, but clearly that's not authentic. Most people would probably like to see Valkia in Norska, or as I would, in the Brass Keep in the Middle Mountains. She's referred to as a Norskin, but as I spoke of in my last video, her tribe is actually called the Schwarzwolf and hails from the Eastern Steppes, which makes her probably the most ideal candidate for an Eastern Corn position, and to take Kairos' position. On the other hand, Egrim could be in the Chimera Plateau, but I wouldn't want to see him any farther east since he's once hailed from the Empire and lawfully fights them and Kislev. He may also end up in the Brass Keep, though. For Scarbrand, this actually makes enough sense from a loreful and thematic approach. Thankwall once summoned Scarbrand at Karak Angul. Angul? which is nearby, and Def Gorge is a ritualistic greenskin battleground, which is the settlement he will start in. Uh, this means a lot of blood and skulls, because Corn does not care where either of those come from as long as it's happening. The issues, though, are major and twofold. Firstly, being I feel like this decision lacks the foresight of future content positions, mainly for greenskins and vampire counts in the Badlands, but also that any lords with a position near here are going to be hard-pressed to deal with Scarbrand early on. Altharion and Cetra will be neighbors, Queek and Manfred might be possible neighbors, Thoric, Wurzag, Grimgor, Kalida, or Arken may start close as well. I don't think any of them will be able to handle Scarbrand early game. And with Scarbrand's mechanics, he will be doing a lot of moving around. What I hope is that maybe they have a similar ne similar mechanic to Nakai the, uh, the Wanderer in Warhammer 2, where the player started in Albion, but the AI started in Lustria. Perhaps it could be similar here, that the player starts in the Badlands as Scarbrand, but the AI starts in the Chaos Wastes. Uh, if that were the case, then I would very much like this position, but otherwise, as I said, I think it's problematic. Um, also was toying around with the idea that maybe Greater Demons only appear in late game uh, incursions um, when controlled by the AI. I think that would make some of these positions uh, maybe more manageable. Uh, lastly, we have Kugath in the fucking Dragon Isles. The dream of a Lizardman position here, I guess, is dead. This is one of those disappointments I prepared myself for, but it still sucks. It's better than Malice, and perhaps even uh, Rakarth or Lokir, but it still hurts. Lorefully, the River Ruin, and particularly the Mouth of Ruin, is filled with disease, which... In that case, I don't know why they don't just move him to that region, which is neighboring. But I was reading in a forum, uh, apparently Kugath has a lab in the Dragon Isles. Uh, I don't know if that is actually lawfully accurate. I couldn't find anything. There was no source, but uh, potentially, I suppose. Kugath hates dwarves. I believe he tried to uh, siege Karaka Karaz three different times in lore unsuccessfully, but he uh, led a great band of demons that sacked many dwarf holds in the World Edge Mountains. So this 
position gets him closer to the Dowie and the Dowie Czar. Uh, so, like Scarbrand, it works lore fully and thematically, and like Kairos, it works fine considering gameplay and future content. But for me, it still hurts. We can always use starting position change mods, though, for whatever disappointments may come for us personally. To wrap up the DOC, I was definitely surprised. I'm a bit more warmed up now to it uh, almost a week later than when they first announced it, and the positions might make more sense as all the other positions and future content are announced. For the Lizardmen, just about everything lines up with what I had predicted for going my saltiness over the Dragon Isles. Nakai still moved to the jungles of the southeast, even if not exactly where I had hoped. From a real world perspective, the largest crocodile species is the saltwater crocodile. When all else fails in Warhammer lore, Falling back on our own history is always a safe bet. Uh, as we see for my prediction for Alberic. Saltwater crocodiles range from eastern India to southeast Asia and all the way to northern Australia. Now in Warhammer, Australia is effectively attached to Vietnam to form Karash. So from this perspective, Nikai has a pretty thematic start. Due to sea lanes, this start is effectively a short distance back to Lustria as well. With Oxyodal a stone's throw from Tehanawan, Krokgar is now the only lizardman not consolidated within reach of Lustria. This is why I originally liked Oxyodal in the Northern Chaos Wastes and Krokgar at the Dragon Isles, so they were not so safe at home feeling. I think the Lizardmen as a whole race consolidated like this may make them a more powerful force than in Warhammer 2. On a final note, now I understand what they meant by the front door to Chaos in the blog. The door from the Chaos Waste to Lustria, which is cool enough, even if it is quite close to, he to Tehenwan. Tehenwan. Jeez Louise. Uh, everyone else is exactly where I expected them to be. Now, there isn't a lot to talk about for Norska. Throg is expectedly sti still near Troll Country in the Mountains of Hell. Wolfric, I'm not surprised, stayed in Norska, but this decision may lack foresight when the Norskan rework and other future content comes though only CA knows what the plans are for the game, truly. With current Norskin mechanics, this works quite well, and with the new sea lanes mechanic as well. Wolfric, now probably by intentional design, is at the closest point in Norska to the sea lane located in the Sea of Malice, so he can get wandering about. I hope in the Norskin rework, he gets not only a pseudo-horde mechanic, similar to the Vampire Coast and Nakai, but also a Seafang mechanic based on the lore of his ship, giving him an additional unique sea lanes, giving him additional unique sea lanes in perhaps the Frozen Sea, the Southern Sea of Chaos, the Black Sea, the Great Ocean, the Black Gulf, and the Sea of Dread. If that mechanic were to come, I would truly be happy with his current start position in the Hellspire Mountains. Uh, but R.I.P. Sirtha Ek. I got, you might battle Sirtha Ek, right, for the province in the beginning? Or maybe they moved him. I doubt they took Sirtha Ek out of the game. He's too much of a meme. For Kislev, there is even less to talk about. For Katarin and Kastaltin, we start at their realms of chaos position, within Kislev proper. Fantastic. For Boris, we've moved to the Bloodfire Falls and the chaos waste closer and just north of the eastern oblast. This slightly closer proximity makes for an easier time confederating 
confederating Kislev proper, while you can also roleplay Doom Guy. Awesome. Boris being removed from the proximity of the Eastern Steps, I believe was a wise choice when considering future Kislev content lords. A new Ungol Horse Archer character comes to mind for an uh, Eastern Steps or, well, like a Path to the East start location. Perhaps only time will tell. For the Azur, Altharian, Alariel, and Tyrion stay put as expected. Altharian has issues now, though, in that he maintains his dual starting position in Tori of Res and the Southern Badlands, but now both of these provinces are neighboring greater demons. I can see this becoming one of the hardest, most difficult starting positions in the game, but it is still early to say. If this is the case, expect more Mistwalkers in my starting army rework mod. If you guys haven't checked out the Warhammer 2 version I made, I will link that below in the description. And yes. Emric also didn't move, even if he is no longer usurping the Tower of Orag, and is now in a settlement called Tor Sathai. I will revisit later why I had hoped he would move, but as long as we see a Strigoi Lord, this position is fine with me. Teclis unexpectedly did not move to the Turtle Isles, and instead will be in the Jungle of the Gods. He is a character whose start really could be just about anywhere. Though now that the Southlands Thunderdome is rapidly filling, future content in this part of the world will suffer. Otherwise, apparently he lawfully did take a quest in this part of the world at one point, so why not I guess. Myself and others were expecting a high elf position in the eastern colonies, but as long as another lord like Salastra or Malice doesn't start here, Sea Lord Iceland, Aislinn could eventually take this location. For the most egregious start as far as the community is concerned, Alithanar starts in Karen Kar. Whilst I wanted a Lithanar to maybe take his Vortex start in the Broken Lanes, not Broken Lanes, Broken Lands, I didn't want him to start in Karen Car the settlement itself. If anything, I thought they might have a dual start for Lokir or Rakarth. There, since both are assumedly moving farther away from Nagaroth. A lith could alternatively start in the Granite Hills or the Clawed Coast to make everyone happy. Um, but I also think that these positions, the way that they are announced, I think they may be final. It would be nice if they were still a little bit flexible to change before the... Uh, Immortal Empires launch, but um, I suspect not. So now for the races that have yet to be announced, I will go one by one in the the order that they are going to be announced. Cathay is tomorrow, so by the time you see this video, I mean I'm sure they are in the realm their realms of chaos starting positions. It would be weird to move them anywhere else. Uh, Skaven are the same, except Queek may have to go to his Vortex start to uh, get away from Scarbrand. Though I kind of do hope he starts still um, close to Karak Eight Peaks. I, I could see the move happening. With Greenskins... I would have liked it if Greenskins were rotated slightly to more loreful positions, which would also make room for future Greenskin content lords, but as the starting positions are announced, I'm starting to feel it may be less likely, unfortunately. Uh, the Southlands Thunderdome makes a Wurzag shift down to the southern tip, 
of the Southlands, unlikely at this point. Especially if Thoric or Queek land down here. Azhag may be too cramped in troll country to start there. Maybe Ostland. It would be sad to not see these greenskins rotate, though. I really hope they do. For those who may not have caught my last video, I wanted Grom to stay at Massive Oracle, Urzag to shift somewhere in the jungles of the Southlands, Scar's Nick moving closer to Karakid Peaks, possibly taking Grimgore's position in Blackrag, or perhaps Mount Squighorn. Close by, Grimgore to move to Red Eye Mountain, taking Azhag's spot, and Azhag to move to Troll Country. Um, I, I still kind of hope this happens, but it's, uh, tis but a dream. I would not, uh, hold on to hope for it. The Ogre Kingdom should stay s the same as I had predicted, with Grisus by the Silver Road at the Great Hall of Grisus, and <clears throat> please, CA, please, Scrag by the Great Maw. Let's get it done. Beastman should be the same, except Malagor should definitely make the move I had predicted with Scarbrand next door and the growing shit show of Thunderdome. I still think the Dark Lands would be a good shift for him. To the Blasted Lands? Blasted Lands? Blasted Wastelands? <coughs> now for the Tomb King, three star positions in the Thunderdome may be unlikely now. Setra should stay, and perhaps Katep as well. But Kalita may need to move to her Vortex start, especially with the Turtle Isles now being vacant. So she would start in the Copper Desert Province. Moving Arkan may happen, so he is closer to Nagash in Kalita's old start, or possibly to the Black Pyramid to be stuck right between fighting Setra and Volkmar, directly, but also to possibly free up the Land of Assassins area for either Manfred or an Arabian-themed character in a Southern Realms race back. Wood Elves are fine, and Rekka doesn't need to move, except for perhaps if Bellacor lands in Mordheim, but I doubt it. The Vampirates are the same, but with the eastern colonies open, I could see Salostra landing here, but I sort of doubt that as well. The dwarves should be the same at this point, though with the growing possible shit show in the, th in the Southlands Thunderdome, a shift to his vortex start may be more likely now in the uh, spine of Sotek and Lustria. P.S. Grum Brindle in Nagaroth. For the love of everything. For the love of everything, holy. Please. Please, CA. For the Dark Elves, this would also stay the same for the most part. I think a Rakarth position on the western coast of Lustria is even more likely now with the absence of Teclas. Lokir is likely to just be in a neighboring faction to the Great Canal, which I had originally predicted being the broken lands of Tianli, the only province that is touching end currently, or perhaps Nanchang Basin, so he can really get at pillaging Cafe, because the riverlands are st touching basically every side of the Nanchang Basin. As for Malice, he could and should be in the Chaos Wastes, but I could see CA putting him in the Eastern Colonies, but I seriously hope not. There are better suited lords for that location. For the Vampire Counts, Scarbrand and Volkmar have thrown a bit of a wrench in Manfred's possible Nehekara position. Unless if maybe Arkan moves as I mentioned before. 
The Marshes of Madness is surrounded by Scarbrand, Eltharion, and possibly Wurzag, and Queek. So that's not very good for Manfred or a possible Strigoi like Usharan. I also really don't want Manfred taking Gashnag's place in the Border Princedom, since Imric is still probably too close to the Tower of Vorag, where Vorag Bloody Tooth would start. So, so far out of all 86 lords with the current announcements, Manfred's start may be my biggest concern and whether they will make a silly choice. Please, please CA consider a Strigoi legendary lord. I need it. Please. Korst, I think, still has potential to go to or near the haunted forest, but wherever he ends up is going to be a what if scenario a what if scenario anyways. Finally, the Van Karsteins and Kemmler are the same as my last video's predictions. For the Warriors of Chaos, again, the same as my old predictions. For the four DLC champions, I think it is more likely they will have Chaos Waste starts since the greater demons have all moved into the mortal realms. I expect any of them to start in the middle mountains. Valkia or a village in the eastern steppes, near the Great Bastion, maybe Von Horstman in the Chamara Plateau, Festus Village Igram or Valkia could end in the Ice Tooth Mountains, and Sigvald in the Shardlands. Whichever undivided character comes, will probably start stay the same as my previous predictions. We now finally arrive at the dedicated factions mechanics section of the video. Um, just doing this part, just throwing it in, it's going to be somewhat brief compared to the rest of the video, and we're going to ultimately probably get this news on Tuesday. So by the time most of you would see this video, it might be a little irrelevant, so I will make timestamps so that um, you can skip this part if you'd like. But there may still be some good nuggets in here to think about anyways. So, starting with the Demons of Chaos. For both Bellicor and the Demon Prince, formerly known as Yuri, they could get a mechanic similar to Wolfric, where you can either bow to Archaon or try to kill him and claim the title of Ever Chosen for yourself, perhaps granting you the crown of damnation and some significant boof, boofs. <laughs> buffs to boot. Uh, like faction buffs, not just Lord Army buffs. They would have to be significant. I mean, you become the Ever Chosen, you know, it, it, it has to feel significant. For Bellicor, I feel strongly that he should get a unique mechanic just straight up called the Forge of Souls that can buff soul grinders, give them unique abilities, grant easier and earlier access for recruitment, perhaps to the R R R ROR pool, in the same vein as uh, Mistwalkers or um, It Gets Unique Workshop ROR's, perhaps the same for Soul Grinders for each god. Maybe also a new generic undivided Soul Grinder with a ROR variant as well. Perhaps with the sword, the the sword, the Forge of Souls mechanic, there could be something similar to Altharion's mechanic, where you have to capture a Lord's soul. To make a soul grinder in the Forge of Souls? Different legendary lords might give different buffs to the soul grinder they produce. I know that isn't exactly loreful to have to how soul grinders are, are made, but I'm just thinking out loud. Lastly, Bellicor could have a mechanic where he tries to break free of the curse Zinch and the other guy uh, other gods put on him. The first mechanic for 
for fighting for Ever Chosen kind of accomplishes the same thing, though. Volkmar's mechanic has already been hinted at that he is searching for dark artifacts. Perhaps he is trying to get the Books of Nagash before the Tomb Kings do, so Nagash, who hopefully will be coming to the game, can't be resurrected. Nagash is a character I could see hopefully starting in Nagashazar as the player, but maybe only coming in one of the late game incursions if controlled by the AI? Perhaps Volkmar could prevent Nagash's return whilst getting Empire equivalent buffs to what the Tomb Kings get out of the books of Nagash. Perhaps it is something else entirely. We will know soon. Gorst, we have to grab at straws to guess. His father was a farrier and he learned this craft growing up before he was a necromancer. So, a farrier is a blacksmith who specifically works on horseshoes. So, perhaps he could get a mechanic that buffs cavalry, black coaches, and corpse carts. So he's more in the mobility game, rather than just zombies. Another mechanic could be based on how he used to deliver messages about Sylvania and was hunted by witch hunters. I think, uh, specifically, there was a witch hunter named Von Corden that hunted him. Um, perhaps it could be similar to Cathay's caravans in some way, where you send an army to deliver a message for or from Manfred to Vlad, and will have to fend off small empire bands led by witch hunters. Those are the best ideas I could come up with, at least. Rom Brindle already technically has a unique mechanic with the Ancestor Gods mechanic, which is already a powerful mechanic, but perhaps could be revisited to be more unique or engaging, because right now it's very much similar to the, uh, the old Beastman, um, like, Dark Moon or whatever it was mechanic, which is kind of boring. You just make a choice every, you know, handful of turns that, you know, either that in the Beastman's case it was give you buffs or uh, nerfs. Whereas, with the Ancestor Gods, it's just buffs. But, <laughs> not very engaging. So, I could see them giving it a revisit. I hope it is still very powerful, though, as Grom Brindle, of all the dwarf characters, is like closest to god level so and in lore he is hinted at being a god uh so yeah um perhaps you can only access certain choices by completing small tasks like killing 500 enemies in battle or claiming a settlement or uh settling a grudge he should receive some unique War of the Beard grudges, though, since he's starting in Nagaroth, right, CA? Right? Now I'm going to talk about the Von Karsteins, who were mentioned in a forum by a CA staff member as getting new mechanics, even though they are not one of the new dedicated factions. They may be trying to give all legendary lords old legendary lords that never had unique mechanics the very thing. Finally. I'm only going to talk about Vlad and Isabella here, though. They may both get a similar mechanic to Slanesh's seduction and gifts, where you slowly turn a faction that wouldn't normally engage in diplomacy with you into a vassal or ally. It could focus more on unique choices on actions based on court, subterfuge, coercion, manipulation, intimidation, or just straight gifting the kiss of a mortal life to a mortal character to vassalize them. Perhaps the kiss could only be given if the land, the target uh, you've already been working over, has a high enough level of corruption. Perhaps to give unique mechanics to both Vlad and Isabella, 
she could get intrigue akin to the High Elf and Empire influence mechanic. Perhaps Vlad could get the Elector Count's mechanic so he could unite the Empire under vampiric rule. That would be pretty friggin' cool. Both could receive additional Empire or Sylvanian units in the von Karstein bloodline, including archers, huntsmen, free company militia, pistoliers, outriders, and maybe even artillery like mortars or cannons. Not all of them, but at least one, but preferably a few, would help the Sylvanian units in that bloodline stand out more. I don't expect to see Boris in the Red Duke at IE launch, but in case of a surprise, I think uh, Boris Toddbringer, I'm talking about Toddbringer, should get a mechanic involving the Cult of Ulrich, and the Red Duke should get a corrupted vampiric form of the Bretonian Vows. So, to wrap out this video, I want to say we all have to be ready for a fairly equal dose of excitement and disappointment. My original predictions in the first video centered on what made the most sense to me and what would ideally make me happy. Yes, I considered lore, theme, gameplay, proximity, and difficulty, and part of me feels CA did not put in as much consideration, um, just like with the starting armies and how I changed them for my starting army rework. But they're, they're a big comp, you know, they, there's, you know, all checks and balances that need to happen, a bunch of different people with different ideas, boards that have to check off on things, so I understand that it can be, um, not everybody gets to, you know, in, you know, really see out the dream that they all personally have. So we all have to find a nice middle ground, and I think that's what CA is trying to do. Maybe it will all make more sense to me in the end as well. Uh, it's anyone's guess at this point. Anyway, as I said about not being sure if they are going to detail out all previous lords who didn't have unique mechanics, or just the new dedicated factions, uh, we will find out Tuesday, at which time I will either continue making a 4 champion DLC prediction video, or a unique mechanics for old lords video your move ca <laughs> anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video the response to the last video is extremely invigorating i have many more ideas for videos and speculation and would love to get to a point where this channel could become at least a part-time job it's a big time sink so if it was my actual job i could dedicate even more time because you know man's gotta eat I love making these, so if you also want me to continue, your support is uh, vastly appreciated and certainly is noticed. Much love and good health to you. Have a good day, everyone.